Young people live in the present moment. Now means more to them, to you, than yesterday or tomorrow. But as you get older, memories, memories become more important, more precious. Memories help us to return to those moments in our lives that have had some special impact on us, that have influenced us, affected us in some way. Not all our memories are good. Some are pretty negative. Other memories, however, they, they, they bring us joy. They bring us a sense of peace and contentment as we remember. You know, I have a, a little box, and in this box, I keep letters and cards from people. I've had it for a million years. Now, every once in a while, in, in quiet moments, I take that box out and I, I read some of those letters and those cards and those things that I've kept, even a birthday card from my mother, maybe a note that my father wrote me when I was a seminarian, letters from various friends, living and dead, people who are no more. And they wrote to me or contacted me for a whole variety of occasions or reasons. But these little pieces of correspondence, they recreate, the minute I pick them up and start to read, they recreate all kinds of moments and experiences in life, happy times, sad times, frustrating times. They address successes in my life. They address the failures and everything in between. As I read them, and I get uh, oftentimes a little emotional as I look at memories. You know, my sisters and brothers, uh, the New Testament, the Christian scriptures, it's like that kind of a little box. And it contains letters and messages and stories written at a time that's far removed from the present, from now, from where you are from and by people or communities in far distant places. In quiet moments when you take out the Bible to read, and I hope you do, but every week at Mass, as we celebrate, we take the scriptures we heard read today, we open them up. We open up to one of the letters of St. Paul. We open up to the Gospels or the Acts of the apostles. And when we hear or read these readings, we also were transported back to another time. Our memories, our memories as a church, our memories as Christianity are brought to the surface. We take our Christian heritage, we hear it read, or we read it in the Bible, and we take it forward. We move it forward to the present. We have to realize every time that we hear the scriptures read to us at Mass, that they're not only some historical piece of memory, but it's God speaking to us today. These readings are addressed to us. You know, we continue to celebrate the Easter season, as we remember memory, as we remember and call to mind the fact that Jesus died and rose for us, and what an impact that had on the world, what an impact that had on our church. You know, today in the gospel, gospel from St. John, we have the apostles, seven of them, who after Jesus died, didn't know what to do. They had their agenda all mapped out, and then Jesus goes and dies. They didn't know what to do. And so, naturally, they went back to their previous life. They're hanging out. Peter says, in the reading, I'm going fishing. They didn't have anything else to do. 
nothing else to occupy his mind. And he takes the others with him. And while their efforts to go fishing that night were unsuccessful, something did happen. And what happened? They're in the boat, on the sea. Dawn is coming, and they see this guy. They see this guy on the shore. It's Jesus, risen from the dead. This section of John's Gospel, it's the third time that Jesus appears after his resurrection. But his resurrection transformed him so profoundly, so deeply, that he didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him. Jesus said to them, dudes, what are you doing out there? We're fishing. We can catch nothing. Throw the net over to this side. That's what they did. And they caught tons of fish. And all of a sudden, John, the beloved disciple, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. So he says, come on in. Let's have breakfast. Let's eat together. So he breaks bread. And he gives them fish. I don't know how you feel, but fish isn't a big deal for me for breakfast. But that's the breakfast that he offers them. And in that moment, their memories are jarred. And they see Jesus. They recognize him. Jesus appears to the apostles so that that memory of him does not fade away. So that they just don't go back to what they did before. Jesus' appearances, the three times he appears in the New Testament, in the Gospels, after his resurrection, really were a way of preparing the apostles for what they would experience and they, what they would encounter as they started to share his memory, as they started to share his story, as they started to share his message with the world. And that's what the Acts of the Apostles are about, the first reading that we heard today. What happened? after Jesus died and rose and ascended into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit. And you know, all throughout Easter, all these weeks after Easter until Pentecost, we continue to read from the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the early church. My friends, Easter for us is something we remember, but more than that, more than simply a recollection of the past, Easter also tells us something about the present and the future. Easter offers us the possibility for new life. Easter offers us the possibility for change. Do you know in the scripture today, perhaps you noticed it, John writes in the gospel that Jesus prepared a charcoal fire that was waiting for Peter and the other apostles when they came to shore. When was the last time that Peter stood near a charcoal fire? When he denied Christ three times. Jesus in his actions today is forgiving Peter once more. Jesus in his actions today is giving him another chance. And Jesus in his actions gives us another chance again and again and again. The possibility to overcome negative things bad things, things that try to grab hold of us, that try to influence us, and you know what they are. The power of this world, the culture that we live in that doesn't want anything at all to do with Jesus or the gospel or the good news. They just want to take it easy. Jesus, my sisters and brothers, Jesus constantly appears to us. Maybe not the way he appeared in the gospel, but in one another, inviting us, encouraging us, asking us to follow him, inviting us and encouraging us to take this meal, this Eucharist that we receive with him. There's an old saying that goes, we are an Easter people. In this day, when you celebrated Diocesan Youth Day, you talked about talent. Trenton's got talent, I saw. 
on the poster. You know what the talent we have in Trenton? The talent that you have? You have the talent to see the Lord. To see the Lord when he's witnessed to you in one another. And that talent encourages you. It energizes you. It builds you up so that you look from left to right and you see other young people just like you who are loving Christ, loving God, who are trying their best to live his life in the world. Trenton's got talent. Talent to recognize Jesus, the talent to make him part of our life, and to turn away from bad and do good. Trenton's got talent to make Easter every day of our lives. Amen.